Hi, I'm Philip with G6 Technology Services. In this video, we're going to be upgrading this early 2009 20-inch iMac to an SSD. So let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to be using for this upgrade, uh, we have a Phillips screwdriver, a Torx screwdriver, a couple of plastic spudgers, a printout of the inside of the iMac when you take the glass off so we can see where all the screws go because they're not all the same size. Uh, we have some suction cups that we'll be using to remove the glass from the iMac. And we have our solid state drive, which has this big sticker on it, but it is a Samsung 870 Evo uh, 500 gigabyte. Another important piece of our repair puzzle here is our iFixit guide, which is going to show us step by step how to do this repair. So I'll be following along as I'm going and then just explaining to you what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is to put our iMac down like this so that the bottom is facing you, and we need to remove the access panel for the RAM. Okay, so we'll get our number one Phillips screwdriver, and there's a single screw right in the middle that we'll want to unscrew. And then we can remove the RAM access panel. And then I'll go ahead and flip the iMac around so that it's facing the other direction. So I think that will make it easier for us to work on it. Okay. And then I'll grab the suction cups and we'll take this glass off. All right, so we've got our two heavy duty suction cups. Uh, the manual says to put them in opposing corners. So we'll go ahead and do that. So you just press it down in the corner and then you pull the handle and then lock it with the clip. So that's firmly attached. You just kind of test it and make sure it's not going to come off. Then we'll grab our second one and I'll zoom in and show you that one in more detail. Alright, so we've got our suction cup. We'll place it in the corner. Make sure the clip is facing up so we can access it. And we push down, pull the handle, push the clip over, and we just test it. That looks like it's on there. So now we'll get zoomed back out and we'll take this glass off. Okay, so we just lift from both corners, and that's all there is to it. Our glass is off. Uh, you want to make sure to find somewhere safe to put this. Maybe put a cloth or towel down so it's not resting on any surface that will scratch it. Um, I have a nice microfiber cloth off to the side here, which is where I'm going to put this. Okay, now we're going to use our Torx T8 screwdriver to remove all the screws around the bezel or the outer perimeter of our LCD panel. So I had printed out this piece of paper earlier that has a picture of the display on it and all the circles uh, or all the screw positions are circled so as we remove the screws we can place them on the picture in the place they came out to make sure they end up going back in the correct location so there are two different sizes of screws um, you probably don't need to do this I just like to to make things easier but the bottom uh, are noticeably longer than the ones on the sides and the top so you could do it without but we're gonna go ahead and do it this way so again with our T8 Torx, we're just going to go ahead and start removing these screws and then placing them on the picture of the iMac where they came out. Okay, now that our screws are out, we're going to remove the front bezel, which may be a little bit stuck on there, but it should just lift off and you want to be very careful that in the front area there's a microphone cable that will still be connected and we'll need to disconnect that so don't yank up on it too hard because it'll pull that connector out. Okay, and here's our microphone cable so I'll get to zoomed in on that so you can see it better. Alright, so as we lift up on the bezel you can see the microphone cable right here the connector has some tape on it, so we'll want to remove that tape, and then we'll unplug the connector. OK, 
Okay, now our cable is disconnected. Now that our microphone cable is disconnected, we'll go ahead and just lift up on the rest of this bezel, and it should just separate from the computer. And then we'll want to set this off to the side somewhere in a safe place where it won't get damaged. Next, we need to unplug the LCD temperature sensor, which is right over here. So I'll go ahead and get zoomed in on that. Okay, so our temperature connector is right here. And for reference, this is the left side of the computer. This is the left RAM slot, so I'll zoom out real quick. So that's where it is. So all we'll do is go ahead and pull this up. I'm sorry, you can't really see that very well, but you just pull it straight up out of the socket. So it's, it's disconnected now. Now we'll use a T6 Torx to remove the two screws that are holding the display data cable down. Which is right here. Then we'll disconnect the display data cable by pulling up straight up with this black tab that's attached to it. Okay, that is now disconnected. Now we'll have to use our T8 Torx again to remove eight screws, four on each side that are holding our display panel in the computer. So once we remove those, then we'll have to take the LCD panel out to access where the hard drive is. Now it's time to remove our LCD panel. So remember the temperature sensor cable we unplugged earlier? Make sure that we have that free from if it's tucked in behind the fan. And then we'll slowly lift up on the left edge of the display panel and then that will reveal some more cables underneath that we'll need to disconnect. So again, make sure not to lift it up too quickly because we might break something. So I'm gonna get a better angle on that and then we'll disconnect those other cables. Okay, so we have four cables that we need to watch for that are all the way in the back. They have these white connectors. There's two on this side and two over here on this side. So they're not keyed or there's no way to stop you from plugging the wrong one into the wrong socket. So what I'm gonna end up doing is getting a Sharpie or something and trying to label them so I know which way they go back in. Okay, so here's a closer look at those cables. Uh, this one has blue wires and this one has gray wires. So what I'm gonna do is get a Sharpie and just mark the sides of these so I can tell which way they go back in. All right, so this one I marked across both parts of it on the side, and then this one I marked across both parts of it on the top. So that way there's only one way that each one can go back in and still line up with the correct other half of it. So I'll do the same thing on the other side and then we'll get these unplugged. All right, so these are pretty easy to unplug. We just grab one side of it and pull on the other side and they just come right apart. So we'll do that for both. You couldn't really see that very well, but I'm just trying to make it work with one hand. So we got those out and we'll go ahead and get the other ones. All right, so here's the other side that you can see. I did the same thing. I just marked across both halves of it on the long side. And then the other one I marked across both halves of it on the short side so we can tell which one goes to which socket. So again, we just, let's see if I can do it the other way. We just pull and they come out. And then the same thing over here, just pull on it. That one's a little bit difficult. There we go, pull on it and it just comes right apart. So now we should be able to fully separate our LCD panel. So we'll go ahead and lift out the panel the rest of the way. There we go. 
So again, we'll want to set this off to the side somewhere in a safe place where it's not going to get damaged. All right, now we have our display panel out of the way, we can finally access our hard drive to remove it. So the bracket on this is a little bit tricky. This end lifts out after you take this end out. So this plastic piece has to come out first, and it's important to be careful with that not to break it because it is plastic going into metal, so you could snap something off. So I'll zoom in a little bit and show you exactly how to get this piece off without breaking it. All right, so if you're working on the iMac, when I was zoomed out, you could see how it was. The foot is away from you, so the top is towards you. So this is the top of the iMac down here, and this is the bottom. So look for the bar, it should be towards you. What we wanna do is grab what will be your right side, or the left side of the actual iMac, and you can feel a little ridge on the underneath side, on the underside of it. So what we want to do is kind of pull that out a little bit and then up and it should unlatch like that. And it just kind of hinges up. And then we just pull this out. And this end has this pin in it that can break off. So we want to be careful. That's why we start with the other end because it just has this little clip. So now that that's out of the way, we'll put that off to the side. Next, what we'll want to do is remove this piece of tape, if you have one on your system. We'll want to save that because we might need it later. Okay. There we go. So we'll put that off to the side. And the next thing that we're going to need to do is disconnect the hard drive temperature sensor, which is right here. So all we do there, the sensor plugs in up here, you just pull it straight back and it should disconnect like that. And now we're able to remove our hard drive. So to do that, we just lift up on it and then pull it straight back towards you. Wiggle it a little bit to get it out of the plastic mounting bushings. And now our hard drive is mostly free. We still have our power and data connectors to remove. And to do that, you just grab them and pull straight back. Okay, and now our hard drive is completely free. Now begins the process of transferring everything off the old hard drive to the new solid state drive. And I don't mean data, I mean the mounting screws the temperature sensor, foam pads, things like that. So the hard drive is actually bigger than the solid state drive. So I'll go ahead and take this out of the box so we can see the comparison. So as we can see, the solid state drive is quite a bit smaller than the hard drive. So this would just be flopping around inside the iMac if we just tried to put it back in just by, that, by itself. So I didn't mention at the beginning uh, but there is another bracket that you can get any, this is just the one that I have on hand, but there's any uh, manufacturer makes them these two and a half inch to three and a half inch adrap, uh, adapter brackets. And uh, so we'll be using one of those so that the new, new SSD fits nicely into position where the old uh, hard drive was. So we'll get this open and uh, I'll walk you through getting all the parts transferred over. All right, so here's our bracket. This comes with a bag of screws. There are two different sizes of screws, so we want the smaller of the two sizes. Of the two that come in the package, we want to go ahead and use the smaller one, not the big one. This one is for if you're going to be mounting this into a PC case and you need to screw the whole bracket into the drive cage somewhere. This one is going to secure our SSD into the bracket. All right, so we'll get four of those little screws, and then I'm gonna save the rest of these. This bracket actually can hold two SSDs or two two and a half inch drives if you wanted to have a regular hard drive in there for some reason, but um, if you, again, if this would be mostly for a PC because you'd have multiple data and power connectors. In this case, we can only use one because the iMac only has one SATA data and power connector inside of it. So we'll put the rest of these screws off to the side 
And then we'll want to line up our SSD. You can see where the connectors are. And the bracket has this little cutout here. So we want to line up the end with the connectors to the end with the cutout. And I'll go back with the uh, iMac and verify that the screws are going to be, or that the connectors are going to be in the right position. So we'll go ahead and screw these in. We'll be using our number one Phillips screwdriver to do that. And it just involves trying to get these in here without dropping them off the screwdriver, which can be a little bit challenging. Okay, there we managed to get one. Okay, so our SSD is now mounted inside of our bracket. So we'll go ahead and transfer over our temperature sensor. So we'll want to remove the piece of foam and try not to destroy it because we'll want that to go back on. Okay, there's our foam. Adhesive is not really very sticky anymore. And then we have our temperature probe. So what we'll want to do is pry the plastic off the hard drive carefully. And then I'm using the uh, plastic spudger uh, just so we don't scratch the hard drive. That actually came off really easily. Well, that side did anyway. Yep, there we go. All right, so that came off uh, in two pieces. We have the actual temperature sensor itself and this protective housing. So we want to just move this right over. And if we can see the way that this was on here, it was going like that. So I want to make sure it goes in the same position. I guess we'll have to put it on this side. So that'll just stick on to the the SSD somewhere. We'll just go ahead and do that. Uh, and then this will actually end up mounting in the, the iMac like this, so we can't put it on this side because this is in the way. So it should be fine on the bottom. We have plenty of space and then we can just route this cable out the side once we get it in there. So I don't think we need this foam. It doesn't really want to stick. I guess I'll just put it back on there anyway, because that's how they had it. And then on the back, we just had this little piece of foam. So just peel that off. And then, yeah, they just had this on the other side. So we'll just go ahead and stick that somewhere. Again, probably not going to be... It doesn't even have any adhesive left on it, but anyway, there we go. Our new drive has those components on it, so now I have to go get a different screwdriver so we can get the screws out of here. All right, I've got the T8 Torx again, and actually, after further consideration, uh, I'm going to have to move some of the way these things are connected because... This foam piece, the way I had it before, this is where the temperature sensor was, but this is where the foam piece would have been, and it's not even going to make contact with anything because this drive is so thin and the adhesive's gone on it anyway. So I'm just going to take that out, and then if we flip everything to where the temperature sensor was, I didn't want to put it on this side because it wasn't going to have contact with the drive. It was just going to contact the um, case of the uh, bracket here. So I still think that that's better off on the other side. So if I don't put the foam piece back, then we'll have room to put the bracket where it was. On the other side. Right about like that. And then we'll still just route the cable out the back or out the side. So I think this is the best way that we can do this. And I think that's going to work out just fine. 
So now that we know how this is gonna go in here, all we wanna do is make sure that this drive is oriented in the same direction with the pins in the same place. And we're just gonna take our Torx driver and remove the screws from the hard drive and the little rubber pieces and everything. And then we'll just put them in the same place on the new drive caddy or adapter bracket, whatever you want to call it. Okay. We'll just do the same thing for the remaining three. Okay, so it's all ready to go back in the iMac. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear all this stuff off of here. We'll get the iMac back up and put the new SSD in place. All right, so basically now all we're gonna do is follow the removal guide, but in reverse. So we've got our new SSD in the bracket. I wanna make sure to have our cable routed out the correct way so that it can plug in to the logic board. And then we'll go ahead and stick our two little pins back in the slot. And then let these two go into their slot. Okay, so that's in. Uh, we'll go ahead and plug back in our temperature sensor. So that's back in, and we'll plug in our power and data connections for our new SSD. Which look like they're actually not quite in the same position, so we'll have to just give that a little bit extra room. Okay, looks like there's just enough slack here that we can Pull on that a little bit. All right, so it looks like we are secured back in place. I'm just gonna tuck this other sensor cable down in here since we don't have uh, anywhere to tape it. We still have this piece of tape, so I guess I'll put that back kind of how it was. So that should be good. So now we'll get our bracket or the, uh, whatever you call this, the thing that locks the uh, end of the hard drive in place. So all we want to do is just find the end that has the pin, and we just stick that in this little hole, and then just kind of lever it down, and it should just snap into place here. So that's everything securely in, in place. Now it's time to put our LCD panel back on. So remember to make sure that the cables don't get stuck under anything. So we're gonna to need to plug those back in. Uh, so this could be a little bit tricky, but we'll, we'll get it done. Okay, I have our LCD panel. Uh, we'll just rest the edge of that on the edge of the iMac so we can use it to tilt it up. And then we just match up the colored markings that we made earlier and get these cables plugged back in. Okay, there's one. There's two. There's 
there's three. And there's four. So now we'll make sure to leave our uh, temperature cable out. We don't want it tucked underneath because we are gonna need to plug that back in. Uh, so that's right here. We just wanna make sure that is free. Slowly lower our panel back. And we will need to make sure as we're lowering it that these, uh, these cables that we unplugged get tucked back into the gap where they go so that the panel will sit flush. So it may help actually to reverse this a little bit and lift up on the other end to try and coax these things back down into position. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, I'm just gonna fiddle with this a little bit more off camera. You don't need to watch me do that just to make sure it is perfectly uh, aligned there. We do want to make sure that those cables fit back into the grooves where they go. So now that our panel is back on and everything is lined up, we're going to put our screws back in that hold the panel in. So those are going to be, uh, we'll refer back to the, the picture where we put our screws when we were removing them. They're going to be the T8 uh, four on each side. So we'll go ahead and start putting those back in. All right, now that our display is screwed back in, we need to reconnect our display data cable, which should just push straight down. And then we'll use our T6 Torx screwdriver to reinstall the two screws that were holding the data connector in place. Next, we'll go ahead and reconnect our LCD temperature sensor. We just want to kind of tuck the cable back how they had it, plug that cord back in, plug the connector back in, it just plugs straight in. You can just push it down until it clicks. Okay, and then I'm just going to go ahead and further try to tuck this cable out of the way. All right, I think that's about how they had it. Something like that. So, should be good. Now it's time to put our bezel back on. So we wanna hook the bottom on first, and then slowly lower it down, but we don't wanna let it fall all the way because we still need to plug in our microphone cable. All right, so we just need to get our microphone cable, let me grab the spudger, get that out of here. Unplug that back in. Okay, and then we have our tape from earlier, so we'll just go ahead and put this tape back on. Okay, well, that should do it. So we'll just tuck this back down into here where it was. Okay, so we wanna make sure that the microphone cable doesn't get caught right here between this foam piece and the uh, bezel because it get pinched. So we want to make sure as it, we're lowering the bezel to, to push that back down into place. Now we just need to reinstall the screws that are holding the bezel in place. Okay, now that our screws have been reinstalled, we want to make sure to spend some time and clean the LCD panel off because any dust or hair or anything that's gotten on there while we were working on it will be trapped under the glass and you'll have to look at it forever. And we don't want that. So what we're going to do to clean this LCD, I'm going to start by blowing it off with some compressed air. 
Then we have a soft microfiber cloth and some LCD safe uh, cleaning spray. Uh, we don't want to use harsh chemicals uh, on the LCD or anything abrasive that'll scratch it. We don't want to use Windex that has ammonia in it or anything like that. So I usually use this 3M anti-static electronic equipment cleaner that I get at Office Depot and that seems to do a pretty good job. And if you can get everything off with the compressed air, then I would just stop there and don't mess with the microfiber. Okay, and actually it looks like we were able to remove everything, so now the next step is to lower the glass back on. So we'll just make sure to evenly lower the glass. There we go. That's back in place. We'll release our suction cups by releasing the clamp and then opening the handle. All right. Now we'll flip the iMac back so it's facing toward us so we can put the RAM access cover back on. So again, we have our number one Phillips screwdriver and our access panel that we put off to the side. So we'll go ahead and just reinsert that. All right, then we'll stand the iMac back up. And there we have it. All right, so at this point, uh, I think the next step is to plug it in and see if it blows up or not. There's a good sign. And uh, of course we don't have an operating system on that brand new SSD so it's not going to actually boot up into anything. So at this point you would have to use an install media to put macOS back on here. Or what I'm going to do is actually clone the old hard drive onto the new SSD so everything is exactly as the customer left it.